Metal Slug for the Neo Geo. The Metal Slug series is in many ways the rich man's contra. It boasts very similar core gameplay, but being confined to arcades and the exorbitantly expensive carts of the home versions, it hasn't gathered the attention it may well deserve. Of course, to say Metal Slug is just Contra in an expensive suit is selling it short. Whilst the purely 2D levels that need clearing of bad guys are very familiar, the focus is far less on pattern recognition and precise jumping, and more on reacting to your environment and keeping your head when all about you are trying to turn it into Swiss cheese. Enemies attack in dense waves, and some do have weaknesses that must be learned and exploited, but the large sprites and extremely fluid animation makes everything feel far more freeform and organic. Your character's movement feels rather floaty, and with the sheer size of some of the enemies and the ordnance they fire at you, it's rather difficult to avoid everything. The trick is to clear a space for yourself by shooting incoming missiles out of the air, which in itself is challenging, but enjoyable once you get the hang of it. As you would expect from a run-and-gun game, your arsenal is extensive. Your sand and pistol is fine and packs a punch against the rank and file enemies, but once the screen starts to become awash with enemy soldiers, you're going to need something with a little more oomph. And Metal Slug delivers. Rescuing the many POWs rewards with new hardware, such as the machine gun, which lets you spread your shots over the whole screen, the shotgun, which can take out groups of soldiers at close range, and the rocket launcher, which is great for the tougher enemies and will literally blow others to smithereens. For the ultimate in destruction, you'll need to get your hands on the Metal Slugs themselves. Ranging from chubby little tanks Thanks to camels equipped with lasers, these palatable vehicles can soak up quite a bit of damage and clear the screen in a matter of seconds. An unassuming but rather unusual piece of kit becomes as standard in Metal Slug is the knife. In other games, if you touch an enemy, you die, but in Metal Slug they actually have to attack you to have an effect. Just as well, really, considering the impressive number of hazards on screen at once. The knife means melee attacks, and running into the thick of things going crazy with the stabbing is often the best way of staying alive. Even if the enemies do lack the standard touch of death, the game is no pushover. Enemies come from all directions, and just a single hit will spell curtains. With so much going on on screen, the game is all about identifying threats and prioritising where you need to focus your fire. Being an arcade game through and through, just three lives separate you from pumping another quarter into the machine or starting all over again. But if you're struggling to go it alone, get a friend to lend a hand, you've got one of the most exciting cooperative games ever. Probably the best aspects of the game are the graphics and art design. The Neo Geo was expensive for a reason, its power allowed for a high fidelity home arcade experience that was unparalleled at the time. Even today, there are very few 2D games that come close to the standard set by Metal Slug. Every soldier, every vehicle, every level, every last pixel is bursting with character and detail, particularly the giant bosses. The cartoony, hand-drawn approach was a smart one, and the game has aged extremely well. For this reason, SNK hasn't done much to update the series over the years. This is the first game in action, released in 1996. And this is the sixth game, released in 2006. There's not a whole lot of difference between them, and if you're not an expert, telling one entry from another can be tricky. There are a couple of subtle differences. For example, later titles introduce the character transformations, such as becoming a zombie or getting really fat. Aside from that, the look and feel of the games has barely changed in over a decade. For me, this isn't really a problem. The core gameplay is solid, and with the fundamentals locked down, each subsequent title is a matter of designing new, awesome levels. And SNK did a great job, especially after Metal Slug 3, which featured branching paths taking on completely different routes through the game. The developers were also able to go all out on trying to one-up themselves when it came to the bosses. The fact that the first one in Metal Slug 3 is a giant enemy crab should give you some indication of how crazy and impressive they are. So, for the entire Metal Slug series, it's a thumbs up from me, and I'll be interested to give the upcoming Metal Slug 7 a try. If you've not had the pleasure, try one of the demos on Xbox Live, and if you like what you see, try to pick up one of the collections. It's well worth the investment, especially if you've got someone to play with you. For what it lacks in variety and innovation, Metal Slug makes up in polish, style, and good old-fashioned ultra-violence. Mission complete!